<laughs> There's your cue. Got it. Okay. Good morning and welcome to morning devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Jan and I will serve as leader today. We are recording this service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the, we seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all of your mind? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all of your strength? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Rejoice, people of God. Celebrate the life within you and Christ's presence in your midst. Our eyes shall be open. The presence will have new meaning and the future will be bright with hope. Rejoice, people of God. Bow your heads before the one who is our wisdom and our strength. We place ourselves before our God that we may be touched and cleansed by the power of God's spirit. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. <clears throat> Come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into the courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. We'll read the meditation. The sounds of the delivery room recede to a quiet murmur in post-delivery activities and near whispered comments between the parents. The father, gowned with a hairnet and masked face, leaned toward touching their child who was cuddled to the mother. She looked down on the baby who was scowling, her eyes tightly shut. With a sense of awe, the mother stretched forth one finger to gently smooth the child's wrinkled forehead. The need to touch her daughter was urgent, yet she was careful. Developmental psychologists who have examined the process of childbirth and witnessed thousands of deliveries inform us that the need to gently touch one's newborn is a near universal impulse crossing all cultural boundaries. Obviously, we have been created with an innate need to physically connect with our offspring. In this sense, we are very much like God. In the creation of Adam, one of Michelangelo's famous frescoes that decorate the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, he portrays the hand of Adam outstretched with one thing pointed. Opposite it, you see the hand of God in a similar pose, reaching towards man. The two fingertips are nearly touching. No image more clearly reveals the Father's heart. He is ever teaching, reaching out his hand to touch with gentleness and love those who are created in his own image. Mothers and God share a common bond that do they not? Both possess a deep reverence for the life that they have brought into the world. Both yearn to touch those made in their image. Why do you think we read this this morning? What do you get out of it? Father's Day is Sunday. Ah, good point. Mm -hmm. 
Fathers are kind of left out of this reading, though. Yeah, they are. They get the first sentence. <laughs> yeah. What about God the first sentence? Our, God is our father. Yeah. I think the idea of God reaching out to touch us when we can't perceive it, can't fully <clears throat> grasp it, you know, have such limited senses to be aware of it, but that that touch is always there reaching towards us uh, is powerful for me. And on that note, um, when we were doing the artwork and discussing the fingers of God, like reaching out to touch us. I got the visual on that as you were talking, Robert. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful fresco. Yes. Yes. Makes me think of our daughter. The first time she held her child in the NICU, she was a month old and they immediately put her on Sarah skin to skin. Ah, oh, good. Yeah. Precious. Yeah, and that's that's the way she held her for a long time. And then Vaughn yeah. too. Both of them had that, but the skin to skin. And the doctors mm -hmm. and nurses were all watching and crying to see that this little baby had a family. Oh, precious. Oh, yeah. When oh. Kate was in the NICU, they allowed me to touch her through the through the thing. It was a month or so before I held her, but mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. they still knew that touch was so important to this little baby. Absolutely. Wow. How old was that baby when it was born? Which, how many months? Oh, Kate was uh, 26, 27 weeks. Okay, wow. and Amelia was 25. Yeah. And one pound, That's 10 true. ounces. Yeah. So, oh my, that is little. <laughs> I have been in the NICUs, and like I told you, working at Howard County General. Oh, right. And they are teeny tiny, some of them. Mm. They're yeah. all little, but some of them are incredibly tiny. tiny yeah. To give yeah. you an idea of the size, is uh, somebody brought in a big bag of MMs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And put it beside the babies, and the bag of M&Ms was almost bigger than the babies. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. I'm glad they used chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the nurses ate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Very sweet. <laughs> well, I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to ask you to try to think of what you'll carry from this today, the reading and the discussion, into the day with you. And the weekend, I guess. Mm -hmm. The sounds of the delivery room recede into a quiet murmur of post-delivery activities and near whispered comments between the parents. The father, gowned with a hairnet and masked face, leaned forward, touching their child who was cuddled to the mother. She looked down on the baby who was scowling, her eyes tightly shut. With a sense of awe, the mother stretched forth one finger to gently touch and smooth the child's wrinkled forehead. The need to touch her daughter was urgent, yet she was careful. Developmental psychologists who have examined the process of childbirth and witnessed thousands of deliveries inform us that the need to gently touch one's newborn is nearly universal impulse crossing all cultural boundaries. Obviously, we have been created with an innate need to physically connect with our offspring. In this sense, we are very much like God. In the creation of Adam, one of Michelangelo's famous frescoes that decorate the ceiling of the Sistine Camp Chapel, he portrays the hand of Adam outstretched with the finger pointed Opposite to it, you see the hand of God in a similar pose, reaching towards man. The two fingers are nearly touching. No image more clearly reveals the Father's heart. He is ever reaching out his hand to touch with gentleness and love those who are created in his own image. Mothers and fathers 
and God share a common bond then, do they not? They possess a deep reverence for this life that they have brought into the world mm -hmm. and all yearn to touch those made in their image. I am thinking about um, the fact that COVID stopped mm. hugging. We've stopped hugging because of COVID and we've missed that. And we're so glad to have it back again where it exists. And I'm thinking of Dina's sermon about the welcome, putting your hand on your chest and saying, welcome. If you remember that sermon, it had to do with letting people in, being open to have people make eye contact with you or say good morning or make them feel something kind. Well, even the not wearing masks, just think about people that are lip readers, like what were they doing? Yeah. It had to be so difficult. I mean, it was difficult for all of us, don't get me wrong. You're right. Yeah, I had that very same thought about uh, with COVID. I mean, so many ways that we used to touch one another, shaking hands, um, and pat on the back, uh, you know, they, that all became kind of, uh, gee, can we do that? Uh, even now, it's like, uh, do we shake hands or elbow bumps for some reason don't do it for me? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have this kind of awkward, uh, you know, how do we how do we touch one another, and is it okay? And, yeah. and, uh, and that's a shame. Yeah, or it's a challenge. It makes me think of the people with COVID that have died alone in the hospital. I can't imagine oh, anything God. worse. So sad. So many people. That was, was a, a very tough, sad tough thing. Time. That was a very sad time. Certainly yes, was. it was. I'm going to remember the going, going out and walking around, doing what I do, and meeting people eye to eye, saying good morning, and having the um, desire to say, to express welcome to them. <laughs> I think for me, the uh, thought that, that I had about being in the delivery room with uh, uh, my two children, looking at them and, and thinking of the unlimited possibilities of their life and what, uh, um, what amazing visions would be open to them. And I think that's how God sees us at every point in our life. He looks at us and says of, of each of us. What an amazing set of possibilities for this creature. Uh, you know, how, how wonderful, wonderfully made it is. He is, she is. That's lovely. We, uh, when our granddaughter was born, she was born in another hospital and transferred over to the NICU, University of Pennsylvania. And um, the doctor that had to transport her had to, keep a mask on her they didn't have a mask small enough for her so he had to make sure she stayed connected to the oxygen mm -hmm. for that trip and you know he kept her alive and Sarah took her back to the NICU to see the nurses they'd like to see how the kids have progressed yeah. and we have a picture of this doctor holding her and I swear there's a connection there mm -hmm. it was amazing to see the connection between that baby and that doctor who kept her alive. I yeah. never thought about that. That must yeah, be they something. Do. The nurses too. Yeah. That's yeah. Something very special. But, uh, what yeah, a gift about that. Kay was actually baptized in the NICU at Howard County General. Yeah. Uh, because we weren't sure she was going to make it. Mm -hmm. and she was getting ready to be transported. Yeah. All the nurses, all the doctors formed a circle around her. Um, and the priest asked for a bottle of sterilized water because he 
I didn't tell him we were going to baptize, but we decided to. And it was the most amazing <laughs> situation I've ever had. Wow. What a what precious a, moment. Wow. Talk about sharing your faith. Yeah. <laughs> and That's, she made it. And she made powerful. it. How powerful for yeah. everybody present. Oh, it was. It was. Just nobody asked them. They just circled around. Wow. Oh, sweet. Really lovely. What a lovely memory. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Let's move on. Okay, 19 or 21. Let's do the today. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and your mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Spirit of companionship and caring, we express our heartfelt gratitude for the company of our friends and family through whom we experience your gift of love. Help us to burst the bonds of self-concern and to extend to all those with whom we come in contact the priceless, priceless riches of compassion and empathy so that in our time, we may truly experience the heaven on earth 
that you have offered to us through the power of the Christ within us. Amen. Are there any intercessions or thanksgivings this morning? For all fathers. Yeah. Or father figures. For those traveling. Susan. Any more? Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may rem remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dan.